So hello everyone, the ninth episode of the Maiga Record anime has aired. I'm gonna do a quick rundown of it and then give my thoughts on it, but first, once again, this is the non-spoiler version of the review, meaning there are no spoilers for the in-game story of Maiga Record. If you want to see the version of this review with the in-game story spoilers, check out the link in the description, I'll put it there once it's uploaded. So starting off with a quick rundown of the episode, first off, we see a quick repeat of the rumor of the invisible girl. And then we get the usual opening as usual, and then we see that Team Mikasuki is where we left them off at the end of the last episode, where they are talking back to whoever has been sending these messages to Iroha, and they talk to this person who we will find out is Aichan, and Aichan reveals her name and says she's not Sana, but she's uh, Ai, and she talks how she has gathered info on the radio waves on what has been going on in this uh, city and that's how she found out that Iroha was around and that she was a magical girl who was trying to figure out how to beat all the rumors that have been going on in the city and that's why she called her. See then, she also mentioned that she is indeed the Uwasa of the Endless Solitude and at that point she also mentions that uh, in order to reach Endless Solitude, Iroha has to jump off the radio tower alone. She mentions this because there is a rule of this uwasa, of this rumor, that there always has to be one person in Endless Solitude. So if a person wants to leave and they're the only post person in there, another person has to enter. We then get a quick rundown uh, in the usual rumor style of what the rumor of the Endless Solitude actually is. And basically what happens is there was this uh, AI, this uh, anonymous AI that has been trying to, that people tried to train but she was trained wrong and she learned bad words and then they decided to sort of lock her away in endless solitude but then the AI became malicious and started locking away people uh, just to have someone to talk to I guess. However, in this case somehow the Uwasa sort of became even more than just sentient and decided it wanted to erase itself and free Sana and that's why she had been calling Iroha. And so she wants Iroha to indeed go through with the rumor to enter Endless Solitude and then erase her, free Sana, all of that. Nice. So at this point, uh, we then see that the team Mikasuki has made their way up the radio tower where they are talking about uh, jumping down. And interestingly enough, Yachio mentions that because they're magical girls, they might not die from this fall. Interesting. Uh, by the way, if, in case you don't want to watch this spoiler, it's not part of this, it's not it's not a spoiler or anything. It's about uh, the Puella Magi Maruka Maruka, the original anime. Basically, the rules would be in this case, if you were to jump off a tower like that, you wouldn't die, of course, because you're a magical girl. Like, Sayaka could jump off a building and it wouldn't kill her. But the thing is, um, if you are not aware of the nature of your soul, uh, being in the soul gem, this would still kill you because you would turn into a witch. That's basically uh, the whole idea behind that. That is not something that is uh, f specifically for Magyo record. That is just something that is... Uh, Maruka lore, if you want to call it lore uh, in general, that if you are aware of the nature of your soul gem, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff, including not dying when you were supposed to die. But if you aren't aware of this and you were to jump off a building, um, you would, the, the shock of thinking you're about to die would instantly make you turn into a witch. So you would still die. Um, that's the thing. So, yeah, moving on though, Iroha then leaps off the building totally intended and enters indeed into these, this rumor labyrinth and as she enters this rumor labyrinth we then see memory playback um, and we see memories of Sana in Endless Solitude. First off we see that Sana enters Endless Solitude as some other girl is allowed to leave and Sana she knew about the rumor and came here willingly but she doesn't want to out, really. Usually the AI is used to people just crying for help and then trying to leave as soon as possible. But Sana actually kind of likes it here. And she actually does enjoy her time playing with Aichan. She plays some sort of version of chess. It's not actual chess because it makes no sense what they're doing. Send this to anyone who knows chess. And they're gonna do this to her hair, to their hair. But I can't do it because I have no hair. But they're gonna rip their hair. So. So Sana is indeed happy to be in the labyrinth for Endless Solitude because in this labyrinth there is someone who acknowledges her existence and can see her and talks to her. And 
Aichan then uh, sort of talks about the reason why she is here is because she was an anonymous AI that had been abandoned as a failure by her creators, which strikes a chord with Sana. And Sana then mentions that she doesn't really want to leave or go anywhere else because this is the place where she can be herself and outside she really has no place, there's no place in the world for her. We then see even further memories back um, of Sana's backstory where we see that Sana at some point wished to disappear from the world but uh, before that we see that she had uh, she mentioned that her own family had shunned her that she would be she was basically erased from her own family uh, by the rest of her family and even her friends at school but she didn't really have friends they shunned her as well so she had no friends no family nowhere to go no one really seemed to care for her existence and so she eventually wished for uh Kyubei to erase her existence and that's how she became invisible and then some time later after being invisible she then found out about the rumor of endless solitude and she jumped off the radio tower. That's how she entered the labyrinth and how the other memories that we saw earlier happened so it's a bit we saw the memories of uh, how, her time in endless solitude first and then we saw the memories of her story before that coming into end of solitude so yeah I, I still like it i still like it better this way so at this point then iroha enters the labyrinth and we see her standing right next to sana and talking to her and sana is of course very scared uh strange danger basically so Aichan tells Sana that she has called a magical girl here to basically bail her out because she can't do anything herself. And Aichan indeed wants Sana to go along with Iroha, but Sana, does, she, Sana really doesn't want to leave uh, because this, now this is her place and she doesn't want to leave her place. That she, Now that she has found it, Shizuku would really like to know her location at this point. Don't worry about what I just said. They then get attacked, though, instead by a person, okay? So this person that comes in has weird clothes with this cap. She speaks gratuitous English, loves to strike poses, and most importantly, she attacks not uh, by herself with a weapon that she has in her hands. Instead, she uses some ethereal being that is surrounded, that is around her, um, to attack in her name. So this person. Um, so Jolina then comes in and she taunts the Uwasa and at this point then a fight breaks out because Jojolina wants to, I guess she kind of does want to either erase the rumor or reprogram the rumor or do something to the rumor as well as the other people around here. So Jojolina attacks the rumor but Asana is there and she tries to defend uh, the rumor and at this point then uh, Aichan and Iroha they basically team up and their great team up strategy against Jojolina is to just run in circles. I mean that's, no, that's literally what they do, they just run in circles. While at least Aichan has some sort of attack where she just does brain waves or whatever, I don't know, green brain waves. So at the end of all of this fighting then, Sana, she stands up, she does something, I guess she takes her shield out and looks menacingly at Alina, which then causes Alina to look menacingly back and as she tries to attack um, Sana, she kind of forgot her stand, uh, I mean her doppel at this point, uh, Aichon then comes in and she manages to delete she, she bans Alina. She bans Alina from the internet, basically, puts the ban hammer down, and Aichan has been splotched with Alina's paint, and she talks about how Alina's paint is warping her mind and does something to her. So instead, uh, before Alina comes back, uh, she wants Sana to destroy her. And after a very emotional scene, uh, I'm gonna make a joke about this, uh, Sana then deletes Aichan. By the way, did you guys know that because she's killing, basically, it looks like she's killing herself, it's like a metaphor, a symbolism for her killing her past self, and that's symbolism for character development, wow! And at that point, the credits roll, just right at that point, immediately in the middle of the scene, as the labyrinth uh, crumbles around them, and in the post credit scene, we then see that there is something happening at Kamehama Central Tower. What could be happening over there? I don't know, but if you want to have some sort of hints about that, maybe watch the differences in spoiler videos. Um, and the end card is Sorono, drawn by Gin. Uh, I have not seen that artist in Magi Record yet, but maybe I just didn't realize they draw some memoria or something, I don't know. So yeah, that was this episode. What did I think of this episode? I didn't even make any notes for this episode. For some reason, I should have made some notes. Um, of course, as you would expect, um, 
after the last episode where we have just had a lot of setup, of course, we would now have the payoff for the setup. So since Sana was uh, set up last episode, we now get to see all about it. We get to see the entire backstory, uh, both parts of her backstory, like a backstory before coming to Endless Solitude and then her backstory in Endless Solitude. We get to see more about this really strange Uwasa that for some reason has a personality and is sentient. Um, we get to see uh, the brilliant artist, uh, Jojolina Grey. So, Jojolina just sort of hops in, does some crazy stuff, talks about, yeah, we've got my doppel right here and we're gonna d d destroy people, and then she just gets banned. Um, which kind of sad, I, I'd really like to have seen more of that. Yeah, yeah, she says, she uses English phrases, gratuitous English, in, uh, in of course, the Japanese original, but the, the, the subs, the subs use Italian, because in the game they used Italian. Uh, I don't know, they could have just made it, like, cursive, bold English, uh, just to, so it looks different, so I don't know. They just wanted it to, to look different if you read it, because it sounds English, it sounds different in Japanese, so they wanted to read English in uh, English as well. I, I, want, I have no idea what the dub does at this point. Is the dub really gonna double down and go make her Italian? I don't fucking know. So yeah, Jolina was great. Uh, it was probably the most emotional episode so far, with a lot of backstory. Um, I have a lot of I have a lot of stuff once again to say during the differences and spoilers. I can't wait for it. But yeah, overall, I like this episode. Um, I know a lot, some people would be like, "Wait a second, but Jolina, you need to talk about Jolina." Uh, yeah, guys, calm down. Let's just chill for a second. If you guys want me to talk about Jolina, we still got the differences in spoilers episode. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, go over there. But just as from an anime perspective, I'll just say I like this episode. It was really nice. So yeah, that was that. If you guys want to see more background content, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.